Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to this little guy. Uh, this is the ADS1115 low power programmable 16 bit analog to digital converter, which incorporates a low drift internal voltage reference, an internal 1 megahertz oscillator, a programmable gain amplifier and a multiplexer digital comparator. It does have a wide voltage supply range. It can operate on a minimum of two volts and can go as high as five and a half volts. The best part about this is if you have any battery operation projects, this will work great because it only has a maximum current draw of 150 microamps. The device here as you can see, uh, it's pretty small. Uh, this right here is the chip in question. Uh, it's about three millimeters squared. It's a surface mount device, so I did adapt this into a standard DIP format because I wanted to be able to access it through breadboards, do experiments and tests. I can do it in regular printed, pre-printed circuit boards and also with... Uh, uh, projects and uh, perf boards. Now, this one's a little different than what you might find on the internet. Uh, most of them will have the control side and the input side together. And this one, I have them separate. Uh, I have the control side on this side and all the inputs on this side. Now, this will work with I2C protocol. So any microcontroller that has I2C capabilities can communicate with this device. Uh, you also have the two wires here, which is for my I2C bus. Uh, this is the positive pin for the, five, the two volts to five and a half volts. This is an, a selectable address pin. Now, when you're on an I2C bus, you can um, select an address for this device. There are four addresses you could choose from, meaning that you can have up to four ADS1115 digital converters on a single bus. Uh, it also has the alert ready pin. Uh, this here allows the uh, device to alert the microcontroller uh, if whether or not there's a problem like say a threshold has been exceeded which I will show you how to set those. Uh, you also have a ready pin to let the microcontroller know when the conversion is completed and read the data. On the bottom are the channels. Uh, this is channel A, channel B, C, and D. Uh, this is a, a physical ground uh, for the power and for the signaling. Now, as you can see, the package is pretty small. On the right is the DS1620. This is just a standard dip package. This has eight pins. This is a what they call a very thin shrink small outline package and believe me it's very small this thing only measures about three millimeters squared now the overall device the the board that i've set up here that i made measures only about three uh 13.7 millimeters by i believe it's uh 11.2 millimeters so it's it's still fairly small with a small footprint uh, this is great if you want to use breadboards uh, it has all the necessary components for it. You don't have to add anything else. Uh, the only thing you would have to add probably is uh, extra circuits for your address or uh, for your power to keep the noise out of the uh, chip, especially when you're doing the uh, conversions. I got the decoupler capacitor on here to help uh, that extra surge when it does a conversion. I've already got the uh, resistors for the pull-up for the I2C. The address is already pulled up because if you don't use it, any pins that you don't use, you want to drive them to the hot to the positive side to help prevent the chip from drawing more current than it needs. So as you can see, it's very very small. If you're interested in these, I'll be glad to sell them to you. Uh, I do have a uh, link in the description, so if you want to buy one of some of these. Uh, just drop me a line and let me know. Now, with I2C, uh, you can communicate with the microcontroller 
up to 100 kilohertz in standard mode, which is default. Uh, if you switch it to fast mode, you can go up to 400 kilohertz. Uh, if you go into high speed mode, it can uh, communicate up to 3.4 megahertz. So that's pretty fast. Now, even though it's got four inputs, the multiplexer can do two things. You can either choose two differential inputs or you could do four single in inputs. Now, because these are addressable, you can have up to four. This means you can have up to eight differential inputs or up to 16 individual channels on a single bus. So it gives you a lot of room. The PGA can be programmed to measure a few microvolts to as high as 5 volts. The sampling rate, which can also be programmed, uh, you can choose a minimum of 8 samples per second, which takes about 1 millisecond to complete. Or you can go up to as high as 860 samples per second, which roughly takes about 124 milliseconds. The alert ready pin, uh, which is this pin right here, uh, this pin here can be programmed to go either in uh, active in the high state or go active in the low state, which I will show later on what this, uh, how to program it. Uh, it also has uh, computer modes. You can do either uh, traditional or you could do window. Now, this does have a high and low threshold setting uh, that you can set based upon what the needs are. What this will do in tra traditional mode, this will allow it to, if the threshold for the high exceeds, then the alert ready pin will turn on and then until it falls below the low threshold. Once it falls below the low threshold, the alert ready pin will turn off. Uh, if you're in window uh, mode, then what it will do is if the threshold is exceeded from high, it will wait until it falls below the high threshold and then turn the alert ready pin back off. You also have conversion modes. You could do con uh, continuous mode, which allows it to continue to do the conversions, uh, or you could do a one shot, which is set up by default. Now with the one shot, if you're doing battery operations, if this thing's going to run a battery, then you, it's preferred to use the one shot because when the one shot's completed, the device will power down until the next instruction. Now, these things are great if you need to measure amperage, temperatures, voltages. I mean, it can monitor its own voltage. It can monitor its own current draw. Uh, if you have temperature sensors, it can measure those. Um, there's liquid levels, pressures. There's virtually almost nothing that this thing cannot do. Uh, anytime that you need an analog measurement from a few microvolts to five volts, this would be the thing to use. And it's very compact. There's not a lot of space. You don't have a lot of external components that it requires. All it needs is just two connections to the, IP, the I2C bus, and you can instruct it and select the address for it. This is a typical setup for the ADS-1115 analog to digital converter. Um, as you can see here, um, I do have, uh, this here is channel A. Uh, this is the one that's going to be doing the sampling. Uh, as you can see, I do have B, C, and D. Uh, this one here is the ground pin. Uh, I've got my address. Uh, pin here uh, set to ground so it's going to be used a default uh, address of 48. I uh, got my alert pin set up which I don't currently have it programmed to do this one yet but I do have it hooked up anyways. Uh, this is the positive 5 volts because this system is going to run on a 5 volt uh, power supply. Um, then I have my two uh, I2C uh, wire communications right here. Um, and as you can see, everything is uh, set up. Now, I also have it connected to my Uno, uh, Arduino Uno R3, uh, as you can see here. Uh, it is programmed to communicate with the uh, ADS-1115. 
Here is a simple program that I wrote uh, to demonstrate on how simple it is to use the ADS-1115. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I am using the Adruno uh, uh, program. Uh, here I just show to load the Adruno language, uh, the wire uh, protocols, so I can do the I2C communications. Uh, the address that I'm going to be using, which is the uh, 40A. Uh, my variables are going to be the converted value. Uh, converted value. Uh, this is where the 16-bit uh, data from the ADC is going to be stored. Uh, this is going to be the calculated value because it's going to have to be converted from the raw data into uh, a voltage. Uh, this is the error. Don't worry about that. That's just so I know if there's a problem with communications. Uh, you do have a set of commands that you must provide to instruct the ADS as to what it's going to do. Uh, you also have the uh, pointer to go to the configuration register, uh, the pointer that leads to the conversion registry. Uh, you also have the uh, high threshold register, the low threshold register. Uh, then you have the instructions as to instructing the ADS as to what to do. For instance, this one here is going to instruct the ADS to perform a single in continuous conversion for five volt readings on channel A. Uh, the second command or instruction tells it to use eight samplings per second. Uh, we're going to use traditional mode and it set the alert pin to pulse high after each conversion. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. Each one of these bits uh, stand for a specific function. So when I go into programming in the next few videos, I'm going to show you what each little bit does and what it programs. Uh, further down, I'm showing the process of the instruction. If you see this section here, uh, you'll see where I'm telling it to open the communications to the uh, I2C address, which was 40A. Uh, we're going to point to the low threshold and we're going to set the th low threshold. Uh, then here I'm going to have a confirmation if it accepted the command or if it failed for some odd reason. The next one we're going to do the high threshold and then we're going to set that one. And then again we're going to check make sure it accepted the command. And then finally, we're going to instruct the ADS what to do. Uh, we're going to point to the configuration registry. We're going to tell it what we mentioned earlier, which you can see I'm using substitutions. All these instructions are going to be sent as binary. And I will show you what each bit sets and what function it provides. Then we have the next section where we're going to be reading the information from the ADS and then we're going to convert that information into a voltage. Now this right here is uh, information uh, based upon the guide and I'm going to go through all that information to help you set it up when we start the program. And then again I'm going to have it print the raw data that we receive and what it converts to as a voltage. And you get, you're going to see this thing is very very precise. So let me go ahead and instruct the command. And then I'm going to open the serial port window. And as you can see, it's starting to print. Now this is the current setting up here. You can see where it says uh, the high threshold value was set and then the low value set. That means I got a confirmation it did accept the command. And then of course I just printed out everything else that was set up. Here you're going to see where it says raw data. This is the data that came from the ADS and this is what it converted into as a voltage. So it's a simple math um, to where you could just convert it from the raw data into a voltage and it can be worked in reverse too if you need to set the high and low thresholds which I'll go into that in much more detail later on. But as you can see, it's fairly simple. This program is basic. Uh, there's not a lot to it. Uh, all I'm showing is what it does and how it works. And as you can see here, it stays pretty accurate. Now, the voltage, if you look at the voltage here, 
uh, you'll see where it says 3.26. Uh, it's set at 3.3 volts. So this is what it's actually reading um, from the 3.3 vo volt line. So it's not very up. It's only about four hundredths of a volt off or a tenth of a hundredth of a tenth volt off. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't fluctuate a whole lot except for the last four digits. And this is very, very precise. Uh, if you need this much precision, you know, you, this will help you definitely. So as you can see, this is very simple. Um, I'll, next videos I'm going to do, I'm going to start showing you more details on how to program it and how to use different aspects of the functions. So please stay tuned and uh, I'll ha hopefully I'll have some new videos up for you soon. In the meantime, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. Thank you for watching.